Hello everyone, thank you all for being here. My name is Sumisha. Uh, I am a business event consultant. I have more than 20 years uh, in business tourism and I have 10 years in the online uh, digital industry. Uh, today we will talk about uh, PR and crisis management. Um, so we have our, our speaker uh, who is an expert. Uh, his name is Tariq. Tariq is the managing director of Perce Perceptions, a PR and digital consultancy with offices in the UAE and Bahrain. He has 23 years of experience in agency and client side PR, uh, journalism and investment banking. Tariq, good morning. How are you? Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks all for, um, for joining us on a Friday. Uh, I'll just add to uh, what Samia said, uh, our crisis communications experience. We've uh, worked on crisis communications projects for the telecoms industry, for the aviation industry, and the logistics industry. And recently, we've done coronavirus stuff, including um, one job for the um, UAE government. So um, I want, I'm going to start this, uh, this uh, webinar with a little quiz okay? okay so um especially since we have a small group it will be a good uh, you know, you can all give your answers so um um i'm gonna describe a scenario a crisis scenario and you're gonna tell me what you would do in such a situation if you were the comms manager okay we so, are um, so imagine uh, you're the comms manager of a um, multinational company uh, with investments all over the world and it's a public company listed on the stock exchange. Um, and um, this, this company, the CEO of the company is, um, is a very, is quite a well-known person. Like he's, um, he's seen as the, as the driver of the company. He's the person that uh, is, is behind uh, the investments, the strategy, the business. And at least that's how the world sees it. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. That's how the, that's how the, what the perception is. And we say in, in, in PR, Perceptions is reality. So as if somebody perceives something in a certain way, it's as good as being reality for that person. So um, this is the, the scenario. And then a coronavirus hits, your CEO gets, uh, gets coronavirus, and he's in the um, ICU, and there's a chance that he might die. Um, and um, the deputy CEO takes over the, the company. Um, the only good thing you can say that the, the scenario is nobody knows about it except you the deputy ceo and the ceo's family what would you do in a situation like this um anybody want to try you, but sam do you have any input any answer his, his microphone is off so are you she's unmuted i am trying to unmute basam as well um, I, can you can you uh, give a description again? What is the company doing? Like, of course, uh, first thing you would probably do is um, uh, you would be um, addressing the needs of the uh, for the needs uh, uh, of the current situation, where you would be probably um, leveraging the skills or the resources of the current company and coming up with some kind of solutions uh, depending on the current needs of the market. Okay, I mean, yes, um, but that's not crisis communications. We're talking about crisis communications, not crisis management. So that, what you're saying is yes, absolutely, but that's crisis management. That's not our uh, area of expertise or not, not the topic of the discussion today, you know? So um, uh, it's a much wider uh, uh, topic than what we're discussing. We're talking only crisis communications, how to, Communicate. Well, obviously, uh, yeah, co communication would be like uh, probably building awareness about the current state. I mean, not go into panic and making sure that the, your environment is uh, handling things like bringing up those leaders who have a vision to um, act uh, on the current situation to, um, <laughs> like, as you said, whatever you perceive is, is uh, what, you, um, what you can actually, um, how do you call it, um, it, it's perceiving uh, good thoughts is the reality. I mean, uh, the challenge is that a lot of people, they don't know how to, when the news and everything is like negative, they don't know how to handle it. So obviously the, the deputy that is uh, on board should be able to handle the, um, again, it's management, I would say. But like communicating is also like the uh, staying positive, I guess. Like, 
making okay. sure that uh, nobody goes in panic and uh, the company doesn't uh, go worse. So you, you need to have the po positive um, uh, mindset to make sure that the operations are handled and the, okay. it's not affecting your current uh, workforce. Okay, uh, I mean, um, what you said is still crisis management. You did touch on crisis communication slightly when you said, when you said um, about uh, you know, keeping positive. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't agree with this. But uh, that is um, one, uh, that's what you touch on communication. It's okay, I mean, but, but you understand the scenario, right? Uh, multinational yeah. company, um, the, the, the CEO is seen as the driver. Uh, the CEO is in, is in critical condition with coronavirus. Um, if if um, nobody knows about it, if people find out about it, you lose sales, the, the, the stock, might, stock price might crash, uh, in, in confidence in the company will, will reduce. Um, these are the things that we're, that we're worried about. And we're worried about the communications. Um, anybody else want to try? Uh, Abdullah or, uh, or me yeah? simply, me simply, Tarek. I, I would, I would do, I would pay attention that no one knows about it, and to keep it as well, and to find uh, if we really need the CEO for taking decisions and he's not uh, able, then we will need like, like Soraya says, then then another crisis management to find someone else. Uh, then people will not think that he is sick. But for sure, not to communicate about it until we have an action plan, uh, action plan in place. Okay, um, that addresses crisis communications. Abdullah or Bassam? I agree with uh, Sumisha. Bassam, anything? He's, Bassam, he's still can you unmute there. yourself? I tried to unmute you, but I can't. Can you unmute yourself and give us your opinion? Okay. Yeah, you mentioned the crisis uh, management. This is my, my area. Okay. So, uh, if you want, I can add some points about it. Okay. Uh, now, now, crisis management usually it's uh, for a certain period of time, like uh, one week or one month, but not for starting and there is like more than quarter or till the end of the year. But uh, definitely it's, it's uh, a major issue because this is like surviving for the company. Mm. So uh, definitely a company should find, uh, like let's say for IBM, IBM changed their uh, uh, production for uh, laptops, the hardware and physical, and changed to be a software company. And mm -hmm. uh, it was the first company in the world uh, producing PCs and uh, computers and laptops and now uh, sold it uh, before like, let's say three to four years or maybe five years to Lenovo. Mm. So I think uh, it's a very uh, subject now common, but uh, definitely you, your, your area is how to, uh, I think, uh, correct me if I am not, that how you can uh, find another ways nowadays to be in the market and to stay in the market because many of companies now they start to feel that easy solution is just to quit mm. and which is this is another crisis no no I mean absolutely um, you're uh, what you what you're saying is right but I, but again I would say that that's crisis management um, not crisis communication our our topic today is very focused on uh, on crisis comms only. So um, not, no one department can be expert in everything. Uh, what mm -hmm. you're talking about is a is a high level CEO's um, you know job, right? So mm -hmm. we're only talking about how to communicate it to the public. I'll just say that um, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll come back to it to the end. We'll, we'll finish the. Um, the webinar and we'll see if you guys have changed your mind that okay, is what we have you here today Tariq to explain us the subtitled uh, line yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, when, 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 once we finish the webinar maybe you will change your minds right okay. maybe you'll change your answers sure so sure. Uh, I'm not happy with any of your answers although so, what you're saying isn't uh, all incorrect some of you are but some of you are, are talking about crisis management so yeah. um, that's not the topic of this yeah, we, we are not experts. That's why we are here today to learn more about it. And feel free to start your presentation. Thank you. Okay, we'll start now. So, um...
I think the most important thing uh, before you start, it should be like the mindset, obviously. So you need to identify the new leaders to cover up the mindset, who is going to be the driving force and who is going to have the vision how to move forward. The communication is also part of the crisis management, but like only communicating is not enough to keep the company sustainable. I mean, profitability is the game. So uh, I think yeah, yeah. it's very important for the companies to come up with a plan where you don't only communicate, but also you drive the company um, company's future. Absolutely, we're not, uh, that's not, uh, we're not even, I mean, uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, crisis communications is only one component of a crisis uh, management plan. Uh, I'm not even saying yeah. it's the most important uh, uh, component, um, uh, but it's um, but but this is a topic that we're we're dealing with today. Uh, it, it's, okay, um, cr crisis communication then could be like uh, probably in the the uh, background, like uh, just giving giving awareness to the team that we are in a situation that has never uh, we never had before. To also give them knowledge about how to um, how do you call, uh, like um, that the uh, giving them the knowledge in terms of like the the situation is uncertain and why to explain that this is happening and, and giving the reasons why this is happening so that people can uh, like control their um, emotional um, emotions because it's very, un like the situation is so uh, new to everybody that uh, usually the crisis may happen like locally or um, destination wise, but it's never happened globally. So people okay. don't know how to, how to manage it. So um, it seems what you're what you're saying is very um, internal communications. It's not wrong. What you're saying isn't incorrect. Um, but yeah, th that would be considered crisis communications. If you're communicating to your team, even Shoaib touched on that. If you're communicating to your, with your team, that is crisis communication. So um, okay. But with also, okay with. also probably go go internationally or uh, regionally. You you can build uh, those uh, collaborations or those platforms like we're doing now. We need to. Uh, communicate what is happening in each sector or each on each end either it's a client or the or the company or, or an international organization you need to build those platforms to network and to understand uh, who is uh, at what stage and what what is happening so that you can um, also okay. bring okay. in this collaboration in power that's that's crisis, that's crisis management and that's um, not the topic it's a bit wider than the topic. so let, let's let's get back to the to the webinar and okay, we'll you're, see you're change your mind at the end okay sure uh, you can yeah. all see the screen you can all see the um, yes the presentation yes yeah. we can see we uh, can yeah please an introduction to crisis communications okay Oops. all right so uh, what is a crisis uh, cri in crisis communications and in, in our field a crisis is anything that can cause significant damage to your reputation or credit that's how we're defining it as far as this to topic is concerned. There are other definitions for it that are larger in scale, but we are only talking about one component of a crisis, uh, of a crisis communications plan, not to, uh, of a crisis management plan. We're only talking about the crisis comms part. Okay, so it's a, an important distinction. Um, damage to reputation and credibility. That's, that's what we are discussing here. Um, and uh, crisis communications is how you communicate this uh, during this crisis, okay, to, to your stakeholders. So examples would be, uh, at the moment we have a pandemic, terrorist activity, terrorist attack your, against your company, an accident, natural disasters, political uh, problems, um, fraud, internal fraud by, by a company, somebody else slanders you, that might be a crisis. It might not be, if it's, a, if it's a, not a significant slander, but it could be a crisis. If, so if it has, uh, the, the potential to, 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 to hurt your reputation or credibility, that's a crisis. So uh, in any communication activity, you have to define your target audience. Okay, so um, th that, that uh, changes the way that your message, message is going to be communicated. You might have different messages for different crises, uh, for different audiences. Okay, uh, broadly, we can say that the, that the uh, your, your um, your uh, audiences are external or, or internal? Um, externally, you're talking about customers, talking about the government, suppliers, investors. So customers, obviously, you need to tell them because they might be worried about the quality of your product or your ability to, to deliver. The government, you have to tell them um, whether or not you're following the rules. 
you know, they, they're worried about regulation and stuff like that. Um, uh, so you have to communicate, you know, different message to them. Uh, suppliers, um, you know, suppliers are also very important. If they, if they cannot uh, get, if you cannot get your supplies, you cannot do business. So you might have to tell your, your suppliers that, um, you know, for example, the coronavirus situation has hurt uh, our ability to receive uh, imports. Uh, we, we need you to, we need you to, um, you know, you might have to tell them something like that. Um, investors, yeah, because um, especially if you're a public company, if you do not um, communicate with them on time and properly, your, your, your share price can crash and your company can get in trouble, you know, serious trouble. And then, of course, there's the public, because the public is always your, st your stakeholders. Um, and usually, and one of the ways of communicating with the public is through the media. So the media are also important stakeholders, because they are um, your conduit to the public. Uh, internally, you have your staff. And if you're a large enough company, you might have contractors working with you as well. So um, how you um, tell your message de depends on who you're talking to. It's very important to remember that. That's not just in crisis comms, that's generally in PR. So here are some guidelines for, um, for good communications during a crisis. Of course, there are many guidelines, but we are giving you um, three important ones. When you're in a crisis, you have to communicate in a timely manner. You have to communicate within minutes, if not hours. You cannot take days. That's the reason that we, ha that we have to have a crisis communications plan beforehand. You see, in the beginning of the, uh, of the uh, webinar, I presented a scenario, and you're all like scrambling to think of, um, of a uh, uh, solution. And that's because um, nothing has been planned before. You know, you think, oh, maybe we should do this, we should do that. There's no time for the, such discussions during a crisis. There's no time for debate. Uh, it should already be policy. You know, the, the, the policy has already in place and you just um, implement it. You go into a, a autopilot, bam, 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 bam. You know, it should be like that. Um, if you do not do this quickly enough, others will, will uh, tell, the, tell your story for you. They'll create rumors about you. They will, uh, you will lose control of the message and then once you lose the control of the message, it's very difficult to get it back. So you have to control the message from the beginning. This is, this is very, very crucial. Um, okay. Number two, transparency. Honesty is the best policy. Okay. You, you have to be honest with your stakeholders. If you, try to, um, if you try to hide something or lie about something, firstly, People are not stupid, they can pick it up. Uh, and, and secondly, you can uh, create a much bigger crisis for yourself. There are dozens and dozens of examples of um, uh, politicians trying to cover up something, and then when it um, comes out, it, it explodes and uh, it, it becomes a much bigger crisis for them than uh, if they had just come clean in the, in the beginning. You know, so, um, so uh, you know, telling, being uh, honest is really important. We, don't, we do not um, recommend hiding anything. There are some times when um, crisis is, is so insignificant that you might want to wait. You see what, what, what happens. You still prepare behind the scenes, your response, and you wait and you monitor the situation and then you react once it becomes significant. There are some cases like that. Um, uh, um, but, um, in, in, but these are usually not um, major crises, you know? These are things that don't involve someone dying or someone being sick, or, you know, or somebody's, you know, um, pandemics or earthquakes or anything like this. You know, you, you, this, you can, this is very difficult. Uh, this you should not hide. It's very unethical as well. Um, clarity. So in PR, I mean, I hate this about PR. I mean, we, we, we keep on trying to um, explain to our clients that um, you should be clear, you should be concise, you should write the stories, you know, your, your copy, um, in a way that is, there's no, you know, no BS. I mean, pardon my language, but you know, you want you want to be clear about it. So in, in PR, there's a lot of there's a lot of the tendency of, of writing in a vague way, trying to promote yourself, be positive, and you know, uh, trying to make yourself look good. A crisis is not the time for this. Uh, during normal times, during normal times is debatable. You can you can argue that you want to promote yourself a little bit in, in, in the press. Okay, I mean, we can have that debate. Uh, that's not a clear cut thing, but during a crisis, you start trying to promote yourself or trying to make yourself look good or try to make yourself in a vague manner, trying to, uh, you know, 
make the situation uh, uh, blur, the, blur the situation that way, what will happen is um, people will, will assume the, the wrong thing and then they will run with the, that story and again you will lose control of the message. You know, and, you, and you're, you, it's very important that you, uh, um, uh, you retain control of the message throughout. Once you lose it, it's very difficult to uh, get it back. Any questions so far? Okay. So um, we're going to teach you the basics, cra you know, crash course on crisis communication, uh, on how to create a crisis communications plan. So um, crisis communication plan lays down a the framework and guidelines to handle communication in the event of a disaster. Okay, so this all has to be done beforehand, not during the crisis. The, um, the most Im important part of a crisis communications plan is a crisis communications map. I would argue this is the most important part of it. Okay, without a crisis communications map, you have no crisis communications plan. Um, and um, a crisis communications map basically is trying to predict all the different types of crises that could happen. So it requires a bit of brainstorming, it requires a bit of research, it might require interviews with, um, with different kinds of stakeholders. So, for example, you uh, have, um, in, in a large company, you would have an IT department. If there's a crisis involving uh, technology or IT, you, go, you, know, uh, you need to discuss it with them, uh, the, the potential issues that might happen. The website goes down, that might be a crisis for some companies, because some companies do all their business online. That's a crisis. You know, if, it's, if it's down for a day, they lose so much money. Um, or if um, uh, IT systems are down and none of the branches can operate, that, that's also a crisis. Um, so then you have other crises like operational crisis. You know, some, for some reason, you're unable to do the job. Uh, that might be a crisis. Um, you, you, know, um, you have crises that are out of, outside of your control, you know, like, uh, like, like the pandemic at the moment. So, so, there are, so you have to discuss it with a lot of stakeholders, a lot of stakeholders, it's a big job, you know, uh, to gather all this information. Uh, generally, there are two kinds of crises. One is company specific, specific to your company, like um, the IT we mentioned, like fraud within your company, uh, th that sort of thing. And there are things that are nationwide or even global, like we're facing at the moment, you know, that are beyond your control, uh, pandemic, natural disaster, that sort of thing. So um, this is one um, way of crisis mapping. It's not the only way. I've seen other, um, other types of crisis maps, other uh, formats. So uh, I've seen, for example, um, a, a, a format where um, you have a, a grid and people put the, the type of crisis and the, and the uh, sorry, the, the severity of the crisis and, type, and the type of crisis like this, and they put it in a grid. So um, the, the company, the, the, the incident that is over here on the top right of the grid, you can picture it, is the most likely scenario, sorry, is the, is the most um, um, uh, dangerous scenario and the least likely scenario, you know? And, uh, and over here is the most likely scenario and the least dangerous scenario. So uh, you, you get what I mean? So you, we, have to, um, we have to try to um, predict how, pos how likely the scenario is and how dangerous it is. Uh, this is another way of doing it. I think this is simpler to explain. That's why we're using this format. So these are non-company specific risks. These are, these are things out of your control. National power failure. Uh, in the UAE, it's unlikely because uh, the, the entire country will go down, but it could happen. You never know. So how serious is it is for, for your company? This is on a scale of one to five. I think a national power failure isn't that serious only because the entire country would be, would be shut off. So you're kind of on a level playing field with others. I mean, you have to make a judgment. It might be serious for some companies, more serious. So um, if everybody is, is shut down, it's a holiday. I don't think it's a big, it's a big deal for most kinds of com companies. So you put the seriousness at two out of five. Um, make sense? I mean, this is my assessment. Every company should make their own assessment. And these are, of course, made up. If you're talking about a specific company, you would have a better understanding of the needs of that company. How likely, likely it would be? I, I would say it's very unlikely for the entire country. So I will put it at one. So the weighted risk rating is 1.5. Get it? Um, contagious diseases. 
Previously, I would have told you it was a likelihood of B1, but now the likelihood of, uh, of another uh, pandemic, I would say is high. I put it at three. Maybe it's even higher. Maybe I'm even underestimating it. Maybe now it's five because uh, a second outbreak, I don't know, it might happen. So this needs some, some analysis. How serious it is? It's pretty serious, right? So we put it at four with average 3.5. Um, and this gives you an idea of which crises to take more seriously than others. You get it? Um, and um, depending on the type of crisis, you might have a different type, a different spokesperson. So um, if it's a very serious um, um, uh, event, you might go to the CEO. If it's less serious, you might go to the head of operation. Uh, or if it's IT specific, you might go to the IT manager. If you're in many countries and it's affecting only one country, you might go to that country manager only. So um, you have to um, make a judgment call about who is going to be announcing. Some companies uh, uh, um, make, make it a policy that the spokesperson is not named, just the company spokesperson. That simplifies the, the, the operation. That makes it a bit easier. So, um, uh, there's, so there's merit in that from, from the point of view of making it simpler. But if you don't have a name attached to it, it has less credibility. People don't believe things when you don't give them details. You don't put the name of the person, you don't put where they're based, uh, you know, um, that sort of thing. They, they uh, might think it's fake or they might think it's, uh, it's made up. You know, so putting a name is always more transparent and more credible. Um, and depending on the type of, um, of crisis, you might decide on different kinds of um, uh, communications channels. Not everything needs to go to the newspapers, right? Some things might only be uh, communicated on the so on social media because it's not big enough. Um, if you have a uh, if you're a telecoms company and your uh, internet is down, you want to send a press release. It's only down for an hour, you know. Okay, it's uh, it's bad, but it's only down for an hour. Do you want to go um, and um, do you want to go and uh, uh, um, send it to the newspapers and everything? There's no need. You just put a little notice on your social media, your customers get it. And uh, once it's resolved, you put another post and it's over. Price is done, right? So uh, some are more serious. Like um, um, if, if there's a financial crisis happening and you have something to say about it, it's affecting you, uh, you might get your CEO on TV and radio, on newspapers, um, everywhere, because it's a very, very um, uh, major event, right? So you have to make a judgment call. Nobody knows this except um, after doing uh, the research with all the stakeholders, you know, talking with all the uh, different uh, 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 stakeholders within the company and also externally as well. So here are some examples of company-specific risk. Okay, um, incident causing injury or death, terrorist activity, um, illness. Cash flow issues, fraud. So um, you see in the in the last, can you see the last uh, column where we have um, proactive or reactive? You guys see that? It shows, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, yes, we see it. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, if you notice, uh, um, most of them are proactive. Okay. Um, I, I think this is the this is a smart way of doing things. But there are some times where you want to wait and um, Stand by and see what the situation is like, and then react if it becomes um, a problem. You know, an example of this would be somebody posting negative comments on social media. You react to every single negative comment? No, it's not worth it. Um, it's it it might spiral. It might get retweeted by somebody and then become the big issue. But you might want, you want, you want to be ready for something like that. If it becomes an issue, you address it. If it doesn't become an issue, you you have your your statement prepared, but you don't send it out. So um, that's an example of something reactive. Uh, I have here also one example of a company having cash flow issues. We had a company, we had a client like this. Okay, we had a client like this, where they it's a, it was a global company and they had uh, difficulty delivering their uh, services. Okay, and um, um, it, because of cash flow. Now, in a case like this, do you tell the entire world that you're having cash flow issues? Do you issue a press release and go to the newspapers? We're having, no, because that might create a crisis. That might create your crisis. So 
And in a situation like this, you have your statement. If it becomes an issue, you issue it. But even um, bef even without issuing it, you can address it with your with your uh, immediate stakeholder. Pick up the phone and call them. You know, not everything has to be in writing. Um, if you do it in writing, it can just be an email to one person. So it's less likely to go out and become public uh, if you're if you're sending it to one person. You know, or if you if you're calling it, it's even even uh, more even safer. So um, uh, this is a good example of, um, of a situation where you um, uh, don't go public, you you wait, and uh, you react if, if it becomes an issue. Okay. Um, the others, I would argue, and a terrorist activity, fraudulent activity, uh, is very difficult to keep it a secret. It's impossible, I would say. You know. Uh, if, there's a, if there's a fraudulent activity within the company, it will reach the government eventually, and it will become public. If there's, if there's someone uh, dead or injured or sick, it, 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 the hospitals are involved, uh, uh, emergency services are involved, uh, people will notice, uh, other companies, other employees will notice that this person is, is, not, is missing, uh, or uh, you know, questions will be raised. Very difficult to, to hide it. And also, it's not ethical, I would, I would argue. So you, with something like this, it's serious enough that you have to you have to report it. Terrorist activity impossible to hide. If someone plants a bomb, you cannot hide it. Uh, suppressing it is uh, useless. Um, illness or death of a key management member. This is our example in the beginning. I would argue it's the same because the because the management members are usually quite uh, well known people. Someone will notice eventually. Okay. Holding statements. So um, these, these have to be prepared beforehand. Uh, there are um, different levels of complexity with holding statements. Not all of them, uh, not all crisis communications plans are equal. So I have uh, a lot of large companies have uh, crisis management plans in place, crisis continuity plans, right? Which includes crisis management. This are, these are the topics that you were discussing in the beginning. And sometimes they, they neglect the, uh, the comms part of it, because they see it as only one component of a very large project. I can see why they, why they would do that, right? So um, very often with these um, crisis continuity plans, you find one holding state, just one, for any kind of crisis. Uh, us being focused on the, on the communications uh, aspect of it, uh, we, are, we view it differently. We think that, um, um, uh, holding statements should be prepared for for every single crisis scenario that you can manage that you can that you can um, predict okay um, uh, I hope you understand the distinction a, a general crisis communications plan will not talk about any specifics of um, of a crisis it will just say incident uh, uh, th this person uh, reported it might say something like um, um, we are looking into it, and we'll, and we'll inform you in the future. That's about it. You know, there, there isn't much to talk about because you don't know any details. But if you uh, create more complicated crisis, uh, holding statements, you can create a holding statement for fires. You can create a holding statement for injury. You can create a holding statement for fraud. Um, and there are some things about it that don't change because um, if you're talking about a, an accident in a company, you can, you can say something like... Um, you can see something like uh, this has never happened in in the history of our um, our company. We've done uh, we have completed 100 million man hours without lost accident. These things won't change. These details won't change. And it gives your your holding statement more credibility, and it gives your holding statement uh, uh, it makes it uh, you know more transparent because you're giving details, right? If you don't give details, it's less transparent. Okay. Um, so here is a sample holding statement. Of course, a holding statement is a bit longer than this. We're just giving you a, a snapshot to, to give you an idea. So the, uh, the example is a contagious disease has uh, broken out, coronavirus, and, um, and, and one employee has, has, um, has contracted the virus. Okay? That, so we, it would look something like this. You know, it's got X, 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 X. All these blanks should be filled when the crisis happens, if you, if you, if you understand what I mean. So um, 
um, uh, um, if you don't have this in place, it'll take you maybe two hours, three hours to practice, and maybe longer. Maybe it'll take you a day when you're when you're, dis when you're debating and discussing with your with your uh, employees. But if it's if it's already prepared and you only have to fill in the blanks, you can do it in five minutes. Uh, I have uh, literally been in this situation before, where um, I have um, uh, completed a uh, crisis communications holding statement in five minutes. Like uh, uh, an airplane crash, it took me five minutes to uh, to, co to complete it. I only had to change a few details. You know, uh, we, we were predicting it was going to be a uh, commercial flight, and it ended up being a uh, military uh, jet. So we changed that small thing, and um, it took five minutes, and, and, the, and the whole thing was ready, and went out to the press, and it, was, it got published all over the world, it got in the in the press, it got international press. So here's what it looks like when it's when it's filled up. Do you see? Um, yes, Tariq, we see, yes. Yeah, so um, it's, um, it's, it's filled up, so all the details are filled. Uh, I want you to notice that we have taken care to present the uh, holding statement in a positive way, not in a negative way. So I have two examples here. In the first example, it's presented positively. An employee of ABC company is being treated at the local, hospital, uh, local medical facility for COVID-19. All right. So you mentioned that the, the person is being treated. You're not just saying that the person has been has been uh, 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 ill. And it's it's the, the slant is positive. Um, support staff are working from home to minimize risk, and operations at the factory will return to normal following a full disinfection. You're giving the positive. Uh, you're, you're, the focus is on the positive. Um, you're ta you're saying you're going to you're going to be disinfecting the factory. You're saying you're going to be minimizing. Um, uh, uh, you, you're, you're, you're saying that they're working from home to minimize risk, okay? Uh, compare that to this. An employee of ABC company has contracted COVID-19. Immediately starts with a negative statement, okay? You alarm people. Uh, operations have been suspended. Again, it's alarming. With support staff working from home to avoid the spread of the disease. The employee has been quarantined at a nearby medical facility. More details will be available once. So the information is exactly the same, but, but here it's stated positively, here it's stated negatively. Here you're alarming people, here you're looking like a proactive company that is doing something. Um, notice that we're not lying. Notice that we're not covering up anything. We're just uh, um, phrasing uh, the, the, uh, the statement positively. We're, saying, we're stating it in a way that is not alarming. That's all. We are being totally honest and transparent. And we're saying that more details will come once they're available. This will uh, have a different impact emotionally on people rather than when they see that, you know, an employee has contracted COVID-19. That's a very alarming way to write. So this takes some, some skill and some practice to be able to write things in a, in a, in a positive manner. So um, there is no one way of writing a um, preparing a crisis communications plan. It can include so many items, so we're not going to go through every single item in detail, but I'll list um, some of the things that you can include in a crisis comms plan. Policies. So as we said in the beginning, you don't want to be debating during a crisis. There's no time for debate. I've been in a situation before. Policies are important to have in place, so you can, you can include a, an actual policy in the, in the crisis comms. You can have approval hierarchies. Not everybody needs to approve everything, all right? We have situations in some companies which have like approval hierarchies that are like, you know, 10 people or something. During normal times, okay, maybe. But during the crisis, you need to get, you need to act fast. You can't wait for um, everybody to be available. So you have, a, you, have a, you have a hierarchy in place where, okay, if it's related to IT, IT must be involved. If it's not related to IT, IT doesn't have to be involved at all, right? You just bypass them. If the CEO is not available, you go to the deputy CEO. You don't have to wait for the CEO to be available. So um, these kinds of hierarchies and kind of policies need to be in place. You might have a list of difficult questions because when you're when you're dealing uh, when you're um, in a crisis, um, very difficult questions arise from the media, from the public. So uh, you have to have uh, prepared answers for them. You can't prepare answers for every single question. You can never you can you can never predict every single question that will come to you. But you can you can predict some of the more obvious ones. You know, now in the, in the pandemic, they might ask you, you they might um, 
they might uh, um, ask you, how much money have you lost from the from coronavirus? You have a, a response. Are you going to go bankrupt? You have a response to that. If you don't have a prepared response, your communication will look disorganized, and, and they might get the impression that you're hiding or lying or, or in serious trouble when you're not, if you're not, right? Uh, you might want to include media and other emergency contact numbers because you might have to contact, you know, be in touch with you to communicate your, your message. Um, uh, normally, we say don't, con don't bother the, the editor-in-chief of a newspaper, the, the very senior people, about every small topic. But um, but you do uh, but when, in a crisis in a crisis you might want to get in touch with the top person you know you might want to do that you might have key messages you might have supporting documents a lot more okay um, all right after the crisis so this is the last slide we're we're almost finished um, after the crisis you want to start fresh. This is a very this is a this is a mistake that a lot of people a lot of companies are unable to make. So um, if you have a person attached to the crisis, that's the cause of the crisis, you you need to get rid of that person. It's very very difficult thing for some people to do. Sometimes that person is the chairman or the CEO. They have to be replaced. You know sometimes the person is a brand ambassador. We had the situation recently in the in the UAE. Uh, this lady was called, yeah, Trendy Frenchie, right? You remember? She had a, a big deal with, with Reebok. Did Reebok try to uh, re retain? Reebok invested money on, in her. They had a campaign, right? They had, they had a campaign. They gave her a lot of money, and all that will be lost. Did they, um, did they uh, um, uh, try to retain her? Try to somehow? Uh, no. She's been damaged by the crisis. Out. Out. Finished. You know, the, 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 cut your... It's like gangrene. You cut your, you have gangrene. You cut your arm so you can live, right? The organization is more important than one person. Um, uh, you remember the House of Cards? Um, Kevin Spacey was involved in a scandal uh, like, like a year or two ago. Remember? And um, they uh, they fired him from the show. They shot the entire thing again. You know, they, it hurt them. It cost them money. It, they lost their main star. But they have to cut their losses and move on. So uh, this is a very difficult thing to do when the person that is uh, 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 tied to the crisis, maybe he's been tied to financial mismanagement or some other thing, is um, the chairman or the CEO. You know? But it's a decision that must be made. Cut your losses, start fresh. Um, and that's, uh, that's the end of it. So um, if you have any questions, uh, we, can, uh, we can address them now. Yes, I have. I have, uh, Tariq, if you can stop sharing your screen. Well, thank you, Tariq. Thank you for your insightful presentation. And uh, actually, I will uh, focus it more on the, the, the audience that we have, uh, who is small business owners. And often we don't have a budget for that. Uh, so, um, and we don't have all this knowledge that you are sharing with us today. So my first question would be for SMEs. What can be the, 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 the simple step-by-step uh, in three points, for example, that can be uh, uh, used uh, right now after this uh, after this uh, this uh, this webinar, and can be affordable and very effective in this COVID crisis. Even it looks like it's almost gone, but it's still there. So, what can be the three simple steps that you can uh, advise? Well, a crisis communications um, plan is not an easy job to do. You know, it's a, it's a big job. And in, in, normally in the UAE, it costs like, like 40K, you know, or 30K minimum, minimum. I've never seen it less than that. Sometimes it goes even higher. So um, it, it really requires the job of somebody that knows what they're doing. But in the days of the internet, a lot of research, resources are available online. So you can research what I've just told you and create a crisis map. And it's not, it's not impossible. It might not be perfect, but you, but you can do it for free for yourself. So, um, so that is a, um, an option if you don't have, uh, yeah, three things. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, no, basically that's it. There's only one. Uh, you can you, you do it yourself. Okay. There's no other way with a crisis, crisis uh, communication. Um, let's go back to the example in the beginning, right? So the, this um, CEO was in, was in critical condition in the ICU. Do you really think that this won't get out? Think of the number of people that are involved. 
the, 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 the person's wife? Will she not talk about it to anybody? Will she not tell her mother, her friend, friends? Will the kid not tell their, their friends at school? Will the hospital people not talk? Will, um, it, within the company, they'll notice he's, he's missing. You know, they'll notice he's not, not around anymore and they're dealing with, with, the, with the deputy CEO. Will they not start rumors? What happened to this, uh, this guy? He disappeared. So um, it's impossible to hide it. So even though a small number of people, I, I misled you in the beginning. I said it's good news. It is good news, only from the point of view that, you, that it's not out so you can control the message from the beginning. So it is good that the, that the news isn't out. But you have to put it out. If you don't put it out, all kinds of, the, the guy will come out of uh, COVID and his company is gone. He's destroyed by, the, by, one, by, by a few bad decisions. Okay? Yeah, so that was the, the answer to that. Thank uh, you. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I have a question, uh, Tara. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, you 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 maybe hear in the in the news that uh, uh, countries are saying that China is the reason for this virus to spread in, in the world. Hmm. So each country they are saying that this is China, this is China, this is China. Hmm. And what you think in in reply from China should be? Is it ignoring them, or uh, reply in a way that uh, you know uh, convince them that it's not? It's not uh, by them spread. It's something else. Yeah. See, governments are in a very um, are in a very uh, good position in crisis, right? Because they're government. There's only one China. There's only one China. Only one America, right? So um, they sometimes break these rules a little bit. Okay. So um, uh, China's reputation will be damaged by this, but it will eventually recover because it's China. You know, it's China. So uh, it, if it is up to me. I mean, my advice would be to come clean and get it over with, right? But governments don't do this. And, and, and even to be honest, the damage to them is less severe than to a company because uh, um, it's not, it doesn't result in the China going down completely because China is too vital for the, for the world. So um, my, my uh, advice still is, yeah, admit we made a mistake. See, China, China um, made a communication error right in the beginning. When they, when they knew that there was a, um, um, uh, the disease was being spread, they were not uh, transparent with the world. So they created the crisis for themselves. If they had, in the beginning, been uh, transparent, they would have looked much better. Now, now they wouldn't be getting accusations from Trump, you know, because they were, uh, yeah, they wouldn't, uh, Trump wouldn't have this, uh, uh, like, card to play, you know, uh, because they were not uh, transparent, they're in the situation. Um, and I would say, still, they should come out and, and be transparent. But company, governments like China um, are a bit difficult for them to be transparent, you know, for various uh, internal reasons, you know. So um, I would still say that the, 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 the advice is the same. They made a huge mistake. And, and also in the case of Trump, I want to give you a good example of um, cutting, cutting, uh, you know, cutting your losses and moving on. Trump is a liability for the Republican plan. Right? You see, it's a very good example. Yeah, um, he's that, a liability. If we can avoid the political uh, situation, it would be nice. It, it, it's one of our uh, main code of conduct. Okay. But yes, right. just in the communication crisis, yeah. it would be nice. No, I mean, uh, it's, I don't think it's political. Um, anybody it's communication as well, I think. Anybody who is communicate the message to your people, to the to other countries, yeah. how to you know deal with the crisis. This is part of the. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to go into country but examples, but any, any, um, I would say that it's the, it's the same. Only the difference is governments can, uh, uh, you know, they, they don't get damaged as much, as easily, as easily, because China will still survive. You know, China is not going to be destroyed by this. China will survive. You know, yeah, but the, if they this had is the, why, yeah, this is why also you see every week or every two three days, you see one person coming from the government to. To talk about to talk about the crisis updates and what's happening, what's going on, what is a you know a new um, a way of dealing with the situation, even in UAE and in America and all the countries, every two three days one of the government will come to give you know a speech about the updates of the crisis. It's normal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Adali. Thank you, Abdullah. Okay. Uh, I have another question. Um, you, you mentioned that in the in the communication crisis communication, there is a dedicated person, either the IT manager, either the country manager, 
but you are an SME, you are small, you are a startup, you don't have that much employee. Um, so, and this person doesn't know how to communicate actually. So which, who should be uh, uh, in front and um, whoever this person is, um, shall they get a, speci a specific training first before to communicate? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it, it depends on your company's policy, right? It depends on how big, big you are. So some, uh, some organizations have a dedicated spokesperson. You know, that, uh, they're, then they're usually in the communication department and they are the, the spokespeople because you can't go to the CEO for every single thing, right? You can't go to the management for every single thing. So that person is dealing daily with the, with the media and, um, and that's the person's job. Um, if, it's a, if, it's a lot, if it's a smaller organization that, that doesn't have a dedicated person like this, um, you might have um, a policy where only the CEO speaks or only the CEO and the deputy CEO speaks or only, uh, or, or you might have a situation where um, the IT manager can speak about IT issues, operations can speak about operations issues and CEO can speak about the larger issues. So all these things need to be written in a policy, you know, in a, in, in a handbook. Sometimes they call crisis communications plan a crisis communications um, a manual. Sometimes they call it that, you know, or a guide. So um, these need to be in place. Whoever is speaking to the, to the media should receive media training. This is a, uh, a very uh, common service in, in, in PR. Um, that teaches you basically how to um, talk with, um, with uh, um, uh, to talk with the uh, um, uh, in front of camera, or uh, how to handle difficult questions. Because um, sometimes the media try to try to control the, the conversation. They, they lead you in a certain in a certain way. So there are certain techniques to uh, keep your you know stay on message. You have a certain agenda. The media have a different agenda. It's important to remember that. Sometimes people think the media are, are their friends. I mean, even your friend who works in the in the, in the media, when the when this happens, when the um, crisis happens, they change. Um, media in the UAE is not very, is not very aggressive, but, if I, but during a crisis, they will change. I mean, I've experienced, I've seen this before. Um, so um, they, ha they have a different agenda to you. You, are, you have a certain message you want to, you want to uh, give, and they have a certain story they want to tell. So they're going to try to twist you and take you to tell their story, but you have to be assertive enough to say, to come back to your message and not to just give them what they want. You know, you have to address what they want in some way. You know, because otherwise um, you look like you're hiding something, but uh, you want the main message to be what you're trying to say. You don't have complete control over it because they will, at the end of the day, they can, they can, they can edit the, uh, the, the video or they can write it whatever they want. But uh, if you do it right, you minimize the damage. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I'm sure you have those services. So anyone who needs them, we will come back to you for sure. And you mentioned the aggressive media. So for me, it's perfect. And one last question, and then we go back to the audience. Um, what are the things that we should avoid? What are the top things not to do? The mistakes to avoid? Um, firstly, don't lie. Uh, secondly, don't hide, cover up. Thirdly, don't fight with the media. You don't. Uh, you won't know how many times this, this people make this mistake. Uh, th there is um, there is a um, there is a way of thinking, you know, where uh, among many companies that they think that um, they're more important than the media. You know, I work for this huge, uh, uh, you, you know, a bank or whatever it is. We're we're so uh, important, and we're in uh, so many countries, and we're so big, and we're, we employ a thousand people, and we're so powerful, and we have so much money. Uh, okay, you might be a, you might be a very um, powerful company, but uh, still, the newspaper can bring you down. Not only the newspaper. Nowadays, a guy with a Twitter account can bring you down. You know, it, 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 can, it can happen. So um, there's this arrogance of the, where people think that they're more important. The media are more important than you. People should understand that. Uh, you want something from them, they want less from you. You know, I mean, sometimes you give them something, some content, but um, uh, the, the, um, the balance of power is in their favor. They, you need them more than they need you. There, there's a kind of arrogance. I think they think that, you know, we're giving them a good story. I mean, they, they have a million other stories to write about, you know? Um, so don't fight with them, because if you fight with them, this, this can backfire spectacularly, spectacularly. Um, yeah, I would say that those are um, the three uh, main things. Yeah, and be prepared. I mean, not being prepared is a is a is a big mistake. You know, be prepared beforehand. 
during the crisis, it's too late. You know, you, you, you will be arguing, debating in no time. Perfect. Thank you so much. Personally, <clears throat> I think I will change my answer to your question at the beginning. I don't know about the audience. Will you change your answer? Um, Abdullah, Surayo? Let's hear how you're going to change your answer. Then I can maybe uh, give a comment about the sure. uh, how, like, Actually, I'm someone who likes uh, one of my values, it's to be honest. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's not good. So I'm very happy that Tariq mentioned that. So I will try to be honest, but I like what he says. If you don't mention that it is the CEO who is sick and that he's under treatment and everybody's taking care of him, that he is in good position, then yes, I, I would go in this way to communicate positively and not mentioning any name, then at least everybody knows uh, that we are proactive and that we communicate. Because often uh, 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 the management is criticized for that, not uh, communicating things. So I would, I would apply simply what uh, Tariq uh, just mentioned. What about yes. you, Sayu? Well, I agree with you. That's why I mentioned that a mindset and bringing up the leaders is important because the leader is the one who will not go emotional, but also be able to handle the crisis uh, situation in a more um, like uh, logical way. Because it's important uh, when you're communicating to your staff or to your partners, you need to find the understanding and uh, the other person should be um, be able to understand the situation. So it, it is about, again, um, communication in a way that you are clear about the situation. So your communicating party is understanding the current situation and he's feeling empathetic rather than being hiding or speaking negatively or trying just to save yourself so it's obviously the mindset and how you approach the situation but then uh, also when you're handling a situation like now uh, a pandemic where uh, a lot of people are not aware and they have to follow they're forced to follow the media to understand uh, what's happening I think uh, the right thing to do would be to follow the right sources not like anything any articles but also probably to refer the uh, for the uh, to follow the announcements that are um, coming from the government side so you can um, <clears throat> more logically align your um, uh, you know uh, your activities within the current uh, uh, situation in the in the country or in the business yeah. and yeah. then um, and, and then as Tarek mentioned, it's important to plan. I mean, any crisis is something that nobody has expected. It hits you very fast. So yes, fast communication is very important, but the planning is also very important. You need to be able to predict what is your, um, you know, post-corona or what is your, uh, what is your planning around your business or your staff or uh, your clients after this situation um, happens so you need to have a plan b you need to have a plan uh, a and uh, to, to plan your business accordingly so to, even your communication should be very diplomatic i would say because you don't know what's coming next so you need to be really uh, it's a sensitive topic and it is affecting everybody including health even if you're trying to bring profit to your organization you need to understand that it's it's hitting human so you need to stay human you need to uh, kind of uh, respond to the audience in the way that is uh, important right now if people are going to hospitals and trying to save their lives obviously you're not going to be promoting your business to sell something you need to see yeah. how to support the actual um, condition of your uh, country and you uh, or the business and, and see where you can actually support the situation the current need so that's I think point. is very very important yeah, that's actually a good point so um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of companies right now, their activities have, uh, have re reduced. They don't have, don't have a lot of activities because they would normally have a uh, conference or a uh, meeting or whatever. Uh, now, none of those things can, can have a launch of a branch, for example, right? None, none of those things can happen. So does that mean they do nothing during that time? So uh, they can replace it with um, corporate you know, CSR. Like you know, corporate uh, sustainability or corporate social responsibility activities to support uh, coronavirus, coronavirus. You know, so at least they're doing uh, um, organization. You know, rather than do nothing. That's a very good point. You can you can proactively. You know, it's not not part of the. 
it's not part of the crisis, but it's a, it's part of um, something that, that you do on, on, on the side, alongside it. While you're managing the crisis, you also proactively uh, market yourself, but not your services. Market yourself as a as a responsible company, uh, and you know it's kind of brand awareness. Yes, it's it's a, it's it's not really a brand awareness. It's more like adapting your um, your uh, services towards the uh, client yeah. needs. Because in the, uh, what is what is it is it needed for businesses to uh, to be proactive? It's uh, to see what they can offer and to see what are the current market needs. I mean, uh, why businesses exist? They they are. You you need to remember the basics of economics. You. How do you sustain? You provide a service, and what what is there in the demand? What is it that your your current uh, market so, needs? So you need to see what is your power and be able to produce that service quickly, as you said, because it's a, it's a crisis to manage the current yeah. situation. So if you're say I'm I'm in a travel business where I've been active for ten years, I've been supporting VIPs. Obviously, I'm not going to be on media, so, uh, you know, promoting my VIP uh, services right. or products. I'll be seeing what's the need right now for the, for the um, like, we are in lockdown. Obviously, when the travel is hit, um, it hits, uh, like, first instance, basically. Everybody's thinking about their, um, their need that is uh, important right now, like food, uh, travels are restricted. So what is it I can do as a company uh, that I can bring value to the current, like, to the current need? We're which is... About- yeah. yeah, which is probably I'll again look at my, uh, you know, my uh, resources, what I can offer. Say, so we're talking we're, about slightly different things, okay? Um, but there is a there is a common element. You're still talking about crisis management, okay? Yeah, the communication. I can I can touch upon the communication no, part. No, I'll just, I'll just let, me, let me just let me just explain what I mean. Something you mentioned is communications, okay? So um, so in, in in communications we have um, uh, CSR and CS. Crisis, uh, sorry, uh, corporate social responsibility and corporate sustainability. Now, corporate uh, uh, sustainability is similar to what you're talking about. Co- corporate sustainability is better than corporate uh, um, uh, uh, social responsibility. Okay. Uh, the reason it's better is because you're tying your business to the communication. Okay. That, that's the, but still focus on the communication and, and for the topic of this of this webinar. So we're not talking about changing your services to meet the new demands. Um, of the of the of your of your customers, we're talking about uh, using changing your services to support the community uh, in a way that is related to your business. So, for example, I mean you're you're in travel, not 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 exactly the same. But if you are a logistics company, you can offer your logistics services to to, to bring uh, medicines or to bring supplies. You know. So, um, well, I can. I, I'm. I'm also doing the same thing as in um, support. Uh, supporting, say, residential uh, needs. It's. It's the yeah. same way. I mean, I'm supporting the current uh, situation through communicating, and I'm opening a door for me to sustain my business. So it's the same thing. But I'm talking about free, right? This is a difference. I'm talking. The company would do it for free. Um, well, uh, I don't have to do things for free, but I can also I know. Uh, you know, offer large companies a can. special large discount. Companies. Yeah, it's it's yeah, okay. also kind of supporting the current situation. Okay, okay. Yeah, large discount will, will, will work as well. Yes, this discount that, will work. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm using my, uh, say, uh, the connections, the network, and the beneficial rates that I offer usually for the pl- clients abroad to support the community in-house, which is uh, they cannot afford uh, lo- like a residential uh, yearly contract. So I offer them a monthly, which is lower than they, their commitments when, they're uncer- when the situation is uncertain. You need to support your community. You need to be able to see how you can support it. So it, it's really up to... And then I'm again speaking from a SME point of view, I mean, you're a consultant, you can have this big picture, but of course, because the, our um, panel uh, discussion is among those who are handling small businesses and 80% yeah. of small businesses is in Dubai. So obviously I'm, I'm talking about how my company is uh, managing this crisis. Actually, it's 95%. But Tariq and Sorayo, it is a very, very interesting topic, very interesting discussion that we can stay forever. However, our time, we are already uh, over past uh, almost 15 minutes. And uh, as it was our last day, I allow it. However, Tariq, thank you so much for your presentation. It was really an insightful uh, um, 
topic. Uh, thank you, Sorayo, for being here with us. Thank you, Shohel, thank you. Shohel Abdullah. Uh, please uh, keep posted. Uh, we have uh, future events online uh, with Maya Men, and we'll be more than happy uh, to inform you and to invite you, you and your network. So we hope this week was very helpful for each one of you and your network, and um, we will share the replays uh, very soon, and don't hesitate to, to, to come back to us and to tell us what we need to improve uh, with our survey. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.